He's live. He's here. He's probably muted in the VOD. Skip five minutes ahead. Wait, have I played this song before? Well, let's listen again. I'm here. That was Prince Daddy, which is a fantastic name for a band. I wouldn't change one thing. If you would, if you wanted to hear the Weezer's Blue album played by a Midwest band with torn vocals, that is a perfect album because the instrumentation sounds straight out of 1995, and I fucking love it. So, hello everyone. I started playing Dread Templar last stream, and I really liked it, but I didn't get to finish it within my time span. So, I wanted to pick it up again and hopefully finish it tonight in the next two hours or so. Someone asked for my Spotify. I think exclamation mark music or exclamation mark Spotify will give you a link to my, just like all my favorite bands. They're not all slow and sad, but there's like a... That's just where I put all songs that I think are worth listening to. So yeah, hope everyone has had a good week. I'm doing a lot better than I was last stream. I'm on the ups. I mean, I'll talk a bit about what I've been up to. I, I really can't fit it all into the opener, but... Yeah. If you're into quaky, dusky, gloom-woody retro FPS games... 
I recommend Dread Templar. Just before I jump in and start playing it, that's the kind of game it is. You're collecting keys and going through areas. But I'm having a lot of fun with it. The music is all bangers in it. Really cool art style. So, I'm enjoying it enough, I'm going to keep playing. Right now, actually. This exact minute. Right after I... Alakazam! Shim Shababwe! Yeah, that. Why aren't I married yet? I am. I'm married to that M F and grind. They sleep in a separate room and show zero physical intimacy. Wish I got a pre prenup. His relationships are hard, man. I mean, I don't think it's normal to be married at 24. So, wait, this is not the right save. Let's see, do 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 do, furthest one, 49. I'm in no rush. I got plenty of other shit in my life to figure out. Let me know if the audio level's okay. It's too loud or quiet. Let's turn a couple knobs on my end. So Sinister just hasn't been active. I think he's taking some time off the internet. And he's not running the VOD channel. I'm trying to start uploading the VODs myself, but it's kind of troublesome to get access to the channel and uh, ownership and all that. So right now, VODs are only on Twitch. You can get the VODs. Well, the issue isn't me getting the VODs off Twitch. It's I can't put them on YouTube yet because I don't have the channel. Audio's fine. All right. Then I'm just going to keep playing. I'm in a graveyard looking to progress through the level. I think this is a secret, but I'm going to go look. Yeah. I'm not going to use Fatunk for VODs. That's... It would get way too crowded quickly. People wouldn't know when I put up uh, the lunchbox too, because it would just be flooded with VODs. No, it's fine on its own channel. Funk, should I ask my friend out? Do you and your friend have mutual feelings for each other? Or... I don't know your situation. I cannot give you even a slither of advice. And I'm not going to pretend to. You got to make that call yourself. On if you think it's a comfortable point in the relationship for that. Thanks for the gifted paper frog. Damn. Thank you very much. So. It's been a couple days. I kind of have to turn around and remember where I'm going. I know this is where I need to go. But I don't know if I have the door access yet. I might need to go find something. Game's not totally linear or clear for that matter. So might be a little bit of wandering for the next 10 minutes. But that's fine. Because a good streamer can improv. You guys ever seen someone count in binary on their fingers? I learned how to do that this week. Sakurai in one of the Smash directs. Just out of nowhere. He's just like, I can count to 31 on one hand. And it, it was fucking in magical. Enough that I had I went and watched a tutorial. Start counting? I'll prove it to you. Hold on. Gotta get my webcam. All right, it'll be a minute. I recently rewired my whole computer rig, and I gotta fish my webcam out of a bundle of wires. But I can do it. I think you can count up to like 16,000 with two hands. I only know one. You will not be getting that tonight. All 
All right, I'll prove it. I'll put on webcam and count to 31 on one hand, but you guys all have to clap and congratulate me for it. Because it was really hard to learn. Not really, it wasn't that hard. Hey, don't look at my pale neck. All right, you ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. I'm gonna keep going. Fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven. 28, 29, 30, 31. Boom! I told you I could do it. If you want a, a cool party trick, just like go on YouTube and look up how to count binary on one hand. It actually works. It's kind of hard to do on the fly. Like if I had to count backwards from 17, I could do it, but it would... I only really know how to go forward. But I can. Thank you. I appreciate it, everyone. This used to have something in it. Like this weird upper area. And that's how I spent my week. I mean, shit. Nothing, there's nothing interesting in the news, is there? Uh, it's gonna be one of those streams where I just gotta talk about the books I've read. So... Uh, before that... This funk work out? I, I, as of two days ago, yes. So I'm, I'm on a cleanse right now. I've gotten really bad with a lot of habits in my life, so... Amongst some of them, the, the main one, I'll get to working out, but uh, I cut out social media entirely. For the past two days, I've given myself a zero tolerance rule. I can't go on Twitter, can't go on Instagram, Reddit, you name it. And it has been hard because my donkey brain is really used to white noising with social media. So I completely cut that out. On top of that, I've started working out every morning. Not extensive, I'm working my way up. I did 10, 15 minutes today of just dumbbells and push-ups and like cardio. I still have a dad bod, but I, I was thinking while I was out walking my dog yesterday, like I have never seen myself in my prime. I've always sort of had this flabby, yeah, you're not fat, but you're not um, toned. And I decided, fuck it. You, you, um, you only live once. So my goal right now is by my 25th birthday to be in my prime. I want to be fucking ripped. I want to look like a JoJo character by next March. Not, I'm not trying to get ripped. I'm, but I do want to get like slimmed up and toned. So that's my goal. Trying to work towards it. On top of that, and this one's really hard. You might actually see it affect this stream. But I picked up intermittent fasting. I'm currently on hour 20 of not eating anything. Except, I guess, like a small bowl of yogurt. And, man, is it tense. I am not used to not stuffing shit in my face. Also, fuck. I... I don't know where to go. So those are multiple things on my... My current venture of getting healthy. And I gotta say, I'm feeling it already. It's only been like three days, but... If you're looking for a change, any of those things... I'm glad I picked up. Actually, I think this is where I need to go. Which is funny, because I started this... The stream right next to it and ignored it. 
I don't think I'll ever have the the Chad Sigma or I I'm actually I'm trying to surpass Sigma. I'm trying to become a Plimbo male. I don't know if I'll ever have the Plimbo silhouette, you know, side profile, but it's a stretch goal. Better than the stretch lines on my hips. This game is Dread Templar. Okay, this is a good sign. But I think I've already hit all this stuff. Ah, oh, jeez. Gonna smash interact on every object until something happens. I think that's my best bet. What the fuck does that mean? Spoken like a true Sigma, which is a derogatory term now, as of 12 hours ago. Oh, I, please do not get to a point where I have to look up a tutorial. I mean, is that it? I know... Oh, wait. Hold on. There's something over there. I have a dash I should probably use. When it's not on cooldown. I've also been picking up a book. I, I'm going, like, full monk mode. Monk... Monkey. Monk with an E at the end. That's kind of my current mood. So I picked up this book called Vendata Treatise which is covering Hindu philosophy, but avoiding more of the religious teachings of Hinduism. It's just focusing on, like, philosophy. And that's... It's kind of like a car wash for my psyche. It's not... There's nothing crazy that I don't kind of know ethically, but there's a lot of really good basics there. You know, I... When I slip up, I and I don't meditate or practice, I become a little more self-indulgent, a little more impatient, a little more narcissistic. And it's a kind of book where it is trying to break through all of that and ask you to survey yourself on an honest level of, are you at the smallest facet of your life acting in a way that you want to? And if I don't find the end point of this map, you will probably hear me go on a Hindu spiel. So you better pray that I find it. Because otherwise we're about to get real deep. So, Vendada. Venda means knowledge, and Ada means end. And the concept of Vendada is trying to understand your true self. Like, when you cut through the ego, cut through uh, the way you act around other people, do your actions uh, align with your principles, I guess. You know, I'm only on page 40, so I can't <laughs> give you a deep dive on it. But it's talking about how self-aware people are of their actions. And I'm going to try and explain it in the most confusing way possible. So there's five t types of people. Mineral people, vegetable people, animal people, human people, and god people. Each level represents uh, an amount of self-awareness. If you're a mineral person, a stone person, uh, otherwise known, you're generally very self-absorbed, self-indulgent. Most of your actions come down to does the perceived self-benefit. You're not thinking about how it affects other people's. Vegetable and animal are a bit higher up. They're aware of their effect they have on other people, but they still act in self-interest. Human people are a little higher than them, where they understand the idea of the greater good, and they're generally well-minded, but they aren't super well self-disciplined. And... Tag what type of person you are. I'm a venti frappuccino. And then the top of the... 
the triangle. Like if I were to scheme out, no, I'm, I'm kidding. Uh, the ideal places, like self-consciousness, it's being aware of your flaws, actively changing them, catching them. And I don't know. This is where I'm in, I am at in the book. So I can't totally explain what the end goal is, but the idea is self-consciousness. It's where you're attuned spiritually, whatever that means to you. It can mean anything. Fuck, dude. I can't. <laughs> I'm gonna have to look up a tutorial. Where the fuck do I go? Does, has anyone here played this game? Any Dread Templar aficionados? Because I don't even know the, the name of this level. I really should have looked this up off stream, huh? Because I this door is opened. I got those keys. But the actual fucking door doesn't actually open. Anyways, I'm trying to cleanse myself of my impurities. Like V. Or I guess Virgil. V was a, was a result. Fuck. Alright. Do I have like a journal or something? I think I'm going to have to go look up a tutorial. Because I'm completely lost. Red Templar walkthrough. This game has like a hundred reviews on Steam, so I might not even be able to find what I need. I can't find a single full playthrough of this game anywhere online. I'm looking for like a five hour long play. Long play. Nothing. Maybe no one's beaten the game. Maybe everyone just gets stuck here and, and they're like... Alright, I'm done. Holy shit. E14M? I don't know if that's the level name, though. I guess I could just look up like a IGN walkthrough or something. E1, M4. No, wait, that is a level. I think. This doesn't look like the level I'm on, though. That's That was the level before this. Where's... I have to go check my save. E2, M1. It's in... Early X. Yeah, th I think this is what I'm looking for. See, yeah, I don't give a shit about the secrets. How do I get out of here? So, oh my god, is that it? Have I just not put the things in the things? Is it that simple? It couldn't be that simple. There's no way. I don't even know. I forgot where that door is. Oh, come on. I've circled by it five times. Where the hell is that? I f well, that's it. Holy shit. 
I'm an idiot. I'm not an idiot. I am silly. I, I just had a silly moment. Just did a brain funny. All right, continuing forward now. How did the Minecraft TF2 thing go? Uh, it was a disaster. Wouldn't run functionally. I lost all the progress I made a year ago, and I struggled to make it work again. But in my defense, the mod was made in like 2012 or something. And it's a miracle like, I got it to work at all. I mean, I'd love to do more with it, but it takes a lot of work to make those maps and set up the spawning. And I'm too busy right now with other stuff. Jumping in and out of work calls. Which is new for me, but... Talking to people now. Ow. So, Minecraft is on hold. Boy, this game loves the color purple. What am I working on? <laughs> That's a secret. I mean, I'm doing a couple other things. I uh, did an interview with just like someone. For their content, not mine. Talking about... I won't spoil anything, but... I've been, um... Talking with, like... Some podcast people. I... Am trying to get some, like, cool merch stuff done. And that's requiring me to do a lot of back and forth. Uh... And the rest of it's just... I haven't done that much this week. Just because I tweeted about it. I've had a busy week, but I'm preparing some stuff for the next few videos. Little bit of its animation. And I'm doing something which I haven't done before, which is I'm kind of laying out a schedule for myself to work on. Like I, I have a couple of like October and September videos that I'm just prepping ahead of time. So when I'm done, I can move on to them quickly so a lot of stuff and the hardest part of it all is I can't look at Twitter anymore because I won't allow myself which means I am not allowed to avoid responsibilities as easily if I want to sit around and twiddle my thumbs I have to think about the time I'm wasting I can't just uh, you know, look at video game concept art on my feed anymore. Which is tough, but it's... it's good. The good change. Did the movement game I envisioned go anywhere? What do you mean? The one I showed, like, a sneak peek of? I've messed... I've... <laughs> fleshed out the concept a bit. Yeah, you'll hear about it. I haven't done anything like making a game, but it's something I'm going to talk about in videos at some point with visual examples. You know, better content that way. So a little bit. It's It, it was a long while ago. I was on the official podcast. That was like a year ago. But yeah, I was on it. Still talk to uh, hug bees now and then. Damn. 
hard on the ammo right now. One of my recent ventures is trying to figure out what I'm going to do for the background set of, like, bomby animation portions. Because I thought about, you know, I could use the TF2 chalkboard for more stuff. But I also feel like building a custom set would give me a bit more flexibility. So, I'm trying to get used to Blender again. To see if I can make it myself without having to commission more work. And... God damn, is that just more to juggle on my plate trying to learn 3D animation again? Or modeling, rather. Keeps me on my toes, I'll tell you that much. Thanks, Ground Salt. Yeah. There's just a lot of Banakery trying to make it aesthetically match Bami too. Because it's like very simplistic. And I don't totally know what I would need for a set yet. So we'll see what I what I end up doing. That sort of perfunctory is I hope that's the right word. It's sort of secondary to the actual script writing and animation portion. That's just like visuals. What's a set? A set is all of the props surrounding a character. So if I have a TV or a chalkboard or a backdrop, that's part of the set. Any props or boxes, those would be a part of the set. It's the uh, stuff surrounding the character. Thanks, Zeleda. Uh, I think you misspelled it. I cannot make that jump. But I need to get up there somehow. And a rocket jump will not work. Been here. I think it's a dead end. Dark Souls door. Oh fuck, it moves! I did not know that. Alright, there's a water section. You know, Hakita actually teased the next layer of Ultra Kill, and it's gonna be a water level. So I'm really excited about that. Highly recommend Ultra Kill, by the way. I think it'll be fun, because the last layer introduced the grapple hook, which I think will work well underwater. Yeah, this is where I need to be. An iron gate in the lake is now open. I can tell that I have technological addiction because recently I do this thing where I'll like walk outside, sit in a chair, and instinctively pull out my phone and start hovering over social media apps. And it got to the point I had to straight up delete the folder because I had a folder for like Twitter and Instagram and all that. And I kept just opening it like a fidget toy. So, I just turned it off entirely. Now I can't even touch it. But it's for the best. Ugh.
What's my Weezer-like band tier list? Ozma has made more good Weezer albums than Weezer has. Which is just funny to me. I mean, who else is Weezer like? No one... I don't... I'm actually not a big fan of bands that are just trying to riff on Weezer. Generally, because it... You know, it can kind of feel a little formulaic sometimes. And early Weezer wasn't that formulaic. Late Weezer really is. Ozma rides that mold. I think they do their own take on it. They really embrace the synthesizers and arpeggios and it just has way more of a fun garagey feel. It's like demos. But mixed well. The easy button is a really new band that does catchy pop rock. I like some of them their stuff. I'm not gonna say it's all hits. I I'm sorta of, I'm mutuals with someone in that band. Uh, Jones. So, I'm a big fan of them. Uh, their last album ha actually had Daniel Brumel on it, who was a, one of the core parts of Ozma. He is a writer and singer on for them. And he was on one of their songs. So, I like them. And I can't think of anyone else. I mean, you can name them and I'll tell you because I've probably heard them. But those are the only ones I really care about. I love Radiohead. They're one of my favorite Weezer likes. An iron gate is supposed to be open. But this gate is closed. Ozma is one of my favorite bands. The easy button is the other one I mentioned. I mean, this is just leading back to the mechanism. It said there's an iron gate underwater. And the only iron gate I see is closed. So I can't really make heads or tails of this. Charlie Bliss is great. I guess they're kind of Weezer-y. Female vocals, which is a, a interesting twist. Is, is that the gate? That's the gate. It just teleports me out of the water. That's all it does. Leon? Merchant ships doesn't ring a bell. Billy Cobb. I like Billy Cobb. Uh, he kind of falls in. I, I don't want to say anything bad. It's fun. I respect him, uh, but I don't really listen to Billy Cobb. I follow him, but I, I don't super uh, zone in on his music. He's a real up-and-comer, I'd say. And he listens to Weezer, so he's really- he's an up-and-coomer. Probably more accurate to say. Up-and-coomer, this place can be a boomer. But when you get to know it, it's really not bad. No one knows that song, but I do. That's the song with Daniel Brumel on it. Word spaghetti. I'm just speaking funny cryptic words and you are listening because your brain requires entertainment in your ears and your eyes. Just pick one. Why are you doing both? Put down the phone. Quit, quit 
queuing for Warzone and watching Twitch streams. That's too much. I'm not lost. I know what that did. High mobility horror game. I actually had an idea for one. Not really an idea, but... I thought it would be cool if there was like a parkour, mirrors, edgy kind of game where something was chasing you the whole time. Whether it was a figure or just a big gelatinous blob that consumes the entire level, forcing you to move, almost like an auto-scroller. A, a high mobility horror game, I feel like could be fun. Temple Run? I'm, well, that's, well, eh. I haven't played Mother Gun shit, but if that's in it, maybe I should. Thoughts on Tally Hall? Well, you know, it's it's one secondary smile to go that extra mile to make me feel today. So, I have a complicated relationship with Tally Hall. Love their songs, but I listen to them at the climax of a psychosis episode where I was reading way too far into everything I watched. And I got really weird and dissecty with Tally Hall. And now when I go back to it, I almost have a panic attack listening to Banana Man. Hopping over on the white hot sand. Here he comes with some for me. Freshly taken from banana tree. I just tried to really dissect the meaning from the songs and it took away from my ability to just listen. But I love them. I think they're catchy and great. There's like a secret up there. I have no idea what that flashy thing is. Like a cyber bat. Which kind of tangentially relates. I guess, to something else I've been doing this week. Since I can't look at social media, I'm listening to podcasts more. And I've been listening to one called Inside Schizophrenia, which talks about a lot of the symptoms and... Uh, well, what's a good word? A lot of the stigmas involving schizophrenia. Uh, and the reason was because I had a... A psychosis episode. I, I know I keep bringing it up. Um, like at the end of last year. And I was trying to figure out what it was. And psychosis is a symptom of schizophrenia. Uh, I talked to a psychiatrist and mine's not that. I thought it was schizoaffective, but I was more like bipolar. But I'm getting off topic. One of the symptoms of schizophrenia was uh, it's fascinating to hear about uh, delusions of grandeur where you believe things are speaking to you indirectly where like you hear a, a song and you truly believe that the song is trying to interact with you or tell you something uh and I learned a lot just watching a podcast on that, trying to understand it. Like the difference between delusions and hallucinations. This is just fun fact for any of you people going into psychology, I guess. I know not everyone is as, as um, invested in how brains function as I am, but 
hallucinations are when you hear voices or see things, but you know they're not real. That's classified as a hallucination. Whereas if you hear voices and you believe what they're saying, or you believe in a narrative that's being told to you, that's a delusion. When it crosses the boundary of, is that reality to you? And it's interesting to hear about, especially being on the recovering. I mean, I feel like I'm not affected by anything, but I'm on the healthy end of my own mental uh, issues, my mental struggles. It's good to hear objectively how off track the brain can become. So that's what I've been learning about this week. I know it's not video games or music, so it's a little left field, but I'm a, I'm a weird human condition kind of guy. So good, po good podcast would recommend if you're into that kind of thing. And some of them actually did overlap with the symptoms I had in mine. Which was going between having racing thoughts and having zero thoughts whatsoever. Because at the worst, some of the worst days I had, I didn't think I could form thoughts at all. It felt like, and this isn't going to make sense, it felt like there was a... a flycatcher in my brain that was catching all of the ID that was catching all of the thoughts and like before I could think something it would just get zapped and so I was just empty headed it goes um no it, this, what I'm talking about goes way beyond ADHD literal I could not think at all I would sit down and be like I gotta write a video nothing. I would try to just plan out my day. I couldn't think two minutes in advance. It was really bad. They talked a bit about that in the podcast I listened to. And that, that was a symptom of psychosis. And yeah, I'm happy to say I don't, I'm not feeling any of this now. I feel completely healthy best I've been in a long, long time. But those were some of the stuff I was really struggling with at my worst. And it was really, you know, less than a year ago. I, I know a lot about ADHD. This is a different thing. ADHD is like not being able to focus on one thing. Like I want to focus on six things but I don't want to commit to any of them, so I'm just going to juggle them on a really base level and not go any further. Because it's... It's more fun to think about like, oh, I can't wait to make this, but I'm not going to sit down and write about it because then, you know, what happens if it's not as good as the pitch. Everyone's ADHD is different. You can have a form of ADHD where you can't think about anything, but... It's not quite as debilitating as the topic I was talking about. Yeah, I didn't want to be open with it when I was going through it because it didn't feel healthy. I was really honestly afraid of being judged about it. I did not want to go on stream and be like, I can't think and have people pity me for it. But I'm living a healthy enough lifestyle now I don't mind talking about it, and I know there's probably someone out there dealing with something like it, and if they can hear one story about it, maybe they'll feel a bit less alone or a bit less hopeless. And even if there's no one like that here tonight, you know, you never know. Maybe someone ends up having a tough day down the line. 
It's, I think it's better to think about this stuff than avoid it until it's necessary. So I don't mind talking about it now that I'm feeling pretty good. Especially because I understand how easy it is to fall down the hole of delusions of... None of this makes sense, but it's so convincing in my head that I almost have to just hear it out. It's really tempting to follow that path. And after a certain point, you have to catch yourself. And just be like, none of this aligns with my understanding of the world. Thanks, Von Braun. Yeah, the speed of my script is something I really overthink. I still want to be able to do longer videos, but I'm pretty conscious about keeping speed. I guess self-conscious about keeping people's attention. I don't want to drag out. I just like talking about the most interesting parts of stuff. But I've had problems in the past where people are like, you really glossed over it. You could have talked more about it. And it is a tough balance for a lot of reasons. For, good, you know, good content, not overlooking the important stuff. Really just for the numbers game. You know, I, I would rather make an 8-minute video than a 3-minute video for a lot of reasons. It's better content, longer form. Ad revenue, I hate to say it, but that's a factor too. 3-minute video just isn't quite as worth the effort. And I feel like I'm at a good balance right now. You know, as weird as the... As much of a stigma as there is making 10 minute videos just for the sake of running two ads, 10 minutes is actually a pretty good sweet spot of I can fit in all the important stuff and elaborate without it dragging out. Like when my videos end up 10 minutes, it's purely by coincidence. I'm not thinking, all right, it's 10 minutes. I can't go for 12. I can't go for 15. It's just the video happens to run that long. My last video, I think, was about 8. No, the last one was 11. But I added the Dusk segment. It was 9, but it became 11. Yeah, my sweet spot is 8 to 12. And I would love to do more 20-minute videos, but I really need a good topic. I can't just talk about a game I played. I have to really be personally invested. And I have a couple ideas for videos like that. But I want to give them a lot more flair and elbow grease. It's not something I could kick out in two weeks. Thanks for the sub augers and kitchening. Augers? I'm going to call my dog that. His name's Augie. But augers, is, it's like Augie and poggers. I'm sorry, I think I just insulted you. By saying I'm going to call my dog you. That's not what I meant. I meant, like, endearingly. It's a, it's a cool name. That zappy handgun isn't that useful. It just freezes enemy but doesn't damage him. Should probably hold that ammo. That's interesting to me, Zenith, because I actually struggle to watch 30-minute videos now. I used to be better at it. If my friends make it, I can afford it. But even if I'm invested in the topic, a 30-minute deep dive on random stuff, it is such a time commitment for me. And maybe that's just me being a little narcissistic about how I make videos but I like videos that focus on the interesting or important or quirky designs I don't always need to hear a breakdown of really you know how the HUD is laid out in a game or how 
the peripheral character lore is designed. If I'm not interested in what's being talked about, it's hard for me to listen. So it has to come from someone that really writes good scripts. There are good reviewers that can make long form reviews and I don't mind. But some of them, it's just like, I don't, I'm not invested. Purple keys in there. Gotta get in there. We gotta get in there. That's the same for most media for me. You know, it's hard for me to watch TV shows if I'm not in, if I, 40 minute shows especially, I gotta be invested. But anime is a big one. I'm a, I'm, I just prefer to read manga a lot of the time because goddamn do some anime drag on and their, anim, their animation does not do them justice. I loved the Dr. Stone manga. I don't think the show did the animation justice. It's, it's at the point I thought about making a video on it at one point. Maybe not Dr. Stone, but just and it, like animation and anime. There are a lot of good shows that cut budget on movement and it shows. Jojo, I'm not gonna lie, kind of falls into that. I think David Production has a great art direction for Jojo. Show looks phenomenal, character design on fleek. But sometimes the movement in Jojo, it's a before and after pose. And they don't really show the in-betweens of movement. And I, I'm not a big fan of that. It gets better. Part 5 wasn't that bad. But I noticed that a lot on like part 3 especially. I actually have another JoJo video I, I'm thinking of making. I'll give you a hint. It involves part seven. It'll probably be a funk TV if I'm honest. But I don't know when I'm going to make it. Maybe like the third, like after the third next video. I would love to just really dissect JoJo more. I wanted to do a... A video about a Rocky forgot, but then someone else did it. I can't remember their name. W was that Haman Beat? I, th I think it was Haman Beat. He's done a Rocky forgot. There was another one where I wanted to talk about like what are the rules of JoJo, because a Rocky will establish rules for stands and then break them, and it's not necessarily a Rocky forgot. It's more so. It's a, a more abstract video idea, which is why I haven't made it yet. But I would love to dissect his art, his writing style. So you'll see more JoJo stuff from me. Yeah, <laughs> what are the rules? So I know where the purple key is. I just don't know where the door to get in is. The purple key is right there. And I can't see an entrance. Actually, I can. It's under. I'm guessing that's the entrance. Doing some reverse engineering. Got to turn one more lever to open the hatch, I believe. But I don't see a hatch anywhere. I I can't talk about part eight's ending because it's spoilers really but it was inoffensive I didn't mind Araki's writing style for eight but I think it did not need to take a decade so the last part of Jojo part eight most parts take typically like two to four years to start and finish 
this one, the last one took 10 years, a literal decade. Started in 2011. And it does not show in the, in the plot. The plot did not need to take 10 years to start and finish. It wasn't a bad part, but it was not a standout. There are a couple of great fights. There are a couple of great callbacks. And it's kind of a fun... It's written differently from other parts. It's not a... They're not traveling the world. There's not a BBEG. There's not a, a big singular villain they got to chase down. It's a bit more like part four where it's n not super linear. They're just living and meandering. But there's a couple of different plot points, of different threads. It's almost like a thriller, almost. And I liked it for that. But it doesn't totally deliver. One lever, two lever. There's one more lever. Yeah, I, as Blue said in chat, Araki took a lot of time off. I think it shows. And it's fine. I don't think part eight was like we, <laughs> coming off of part seven. It is hard to top that. I'll just say it is hard to follow that up. And that's all I'll say about it. I think it had a, a lot of very interesting plot threads. Where? I mean, it has to be in this area, right? It can't possibly be. Oh, found it. It's behind one of the tubes. The vats of acid. I mean, I guess I should have checked the crevices. Huh. What did that even open? Oh, yeah, this. I'm curious what part 9 will be for a lot of reasons that I won't talk about. Just it being the number it is. It being the... Sequentially speaking, there are some... <laughs> there are some assumptions or guesses you can make on what might happen in part 9 that wouldn't be far-fetched. I am curious if people's theories will pay off. Or if Araki, knowing him, is just going to left field it and do something no one expected. Which is where I'm at. I'm curious if he's going to follow order in a sense. Or if he's going to catch people off guard. Either way, you can bet your ass I'm going to read it. Buffet time, max health, cooldown of a dash. Yeah, that sounds good, but I can't. I need one more bloodstone. And I just want to say one more thing on JoJo, and then I promise I'll, I'll drop it. What a good year for JoJo 2021. Part 9 announced and probably coming soon. Part 6 coming out on Netflix. I don't remember when, but this year, I believe. Uh, part 8 ended, I guess I could say too. Just a good year. But damn. If you ever wanted to get into the series, now is not the worst time. That said, I know some people don't like it. I won't push you on it. But I do. And I will say, I know, I said I'd stop. Part three is overrated. 
It's where they introduce stands, but it has the worst stand fights. I truly believe the later parts of JoJo have some of the best fights in anime, period. Of any anime ever. Shon you you cannot go back to reading Shonen after you read some of the better or watch some of the better JoJo parts. Because it is just so cliche by comparison. It's like reading... It's... Reading JoJo is like playing a really good video game. Like a... Like, it's like playing... Yeah, it's not... I, it's not comparable to anything, really. Because in a way, you can read it and sort of decipher how an enemy will be beaten. No, no, honestly, you can't. In part three, a lot of stands are beaten by I hit harder, faster, good, and suck you hard through your jorts. It's like I... I punch harder. But later JoJo parts, it is seventh dimension level mind fuck of mind reading. Of using your surroundings in unconventional ways. It's... Uh, you don't have to like JoJo. All I'm saying is don't don't judge it based off its first three parts. That's all I'm gonna say. If you don't like part four onwards, then I will accept that. Oh yeah, I fucking loved part two, but for different reasons. That one wasn't even stands. That was just, that was just good anime. I don't know what to compare it to. No one watched Fist of the North Star. That was more combat anime. Good watch it, the end. J Joseph was my favorite anime character for years until I read part 7 where it promptly became Gyro like just bar none my second favorite anime character probably Ginko from Mushishi for different reasons he's like a really chill guy and I just love Mushishi but behind him is Shiro and Joseph. And if you want to get technical, then Joseph's my favorite Chocho. Shiro is my favorite Cho Bro. Again, these words mean nothing to half of you, but for the rest of you, you know. Which, by the way, to roll back. If any of you, like, s philosophical, s modest, uh, psychological anime, highly recommend Mushishi. I don't... It's hard to explain. It... This dude named Ginko travels around the world helping people with Mushishi-based problems. And Mushishi are these little microorganisms that just influence the world in different ways. <laughs> I'm not going to bring up this, the S word, but they all have, they all interact with the world in different ways. They have different qualities and mechanics to them, which creates a lot of interesting different plots. Each, each episode is its own story. That's what I'll say. It's like an anthology. Would recommend. Damn. I'm on hard mode. The name is Mushishi. Mushi Chi. I don't know where you can watch it. I watched it on a website. And I'm pissed because they never dubbed 
the second season of it. They dubbed the first season, and Ginkgo is voiced by the same guy who voices Roy Mustang in Full Metal Alchemist. Great voice actor. One of my favorites, really. Uh, he did the dub. But they never dubbed the second season of it, and I really hope they do someday. Which is funny because Ginkgo and Roy Mustang kind of look like each other. They're sort of similar facial and hair structure. That's really the only similarity, but I just thought it was interesting. I think that's why they chose him. Brotherhood used to be my favorite anime. It's still... up there. It's honestly a close contest. I don't know who's number one. But for me, it's either Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, Mushishi... Part 7 hasn't been adapted yet, so that doesn't count. But that's my favorite, like, Japanese property. Mob Psycho 100. I think that's a contender for favorite from me. Okay, I'm going to take my time clearing this area. No, I don't. I have not watched Jujutsu Kaisen. I, is that the guy with the Kakashi face mask over his eyes? I... Is that Shonen-y? There's no offense, but it's really hard for me to pick up Shonen stuff now. I... The last one I followed was My Hero, and I kind of regret following it. Or I guess... I guess Attack on Titan, if that counts. Which I equally kind of regret following. Like, the premise caught me, and then it was just back-to-back -back tournament arcs, and then a bunch of predictable character arcs, and I'm not even going to crack open Attack on Titan's ending. That was just... Just got to keep raising the stakes. I don't think AOT had a tournament arc. I was talking about my hero. They had like five tournament arcs in a row at the beginning. Also, I'm just gonna be honest. It would have been more interesting if Deku never got a quirk. Like the whole plot is he, it's really not a spoiler. He was quirkless, but in the first episode, he's given a quirk. That's really strong, but he has to train it. And he... The whole story changes because... Well... Okay, let me back up. His entire character was that he loves superheroes. He really, really wants to be a superhero. He idolizes them, but he doesn't have a quirk. And it's... It fucking destroys him. Because 80% of people have quirks. And then... Someone shows up and he's like, you get to have a quirk now. And it instantly removes 80% of the interesting plot developments of Deku. Because he's no longer a quirkless man in a quirky world trying to prove himself. He is just the protagonist. And you know he's going to win every fight. You know that he's going to power crawl. N everything is predictable. And even when they introduce the unpredictable elements, it's not original. It's like, oh, it's like that other thing, that other anime. And it just honestly introduces plot holes where it's like, oh, why was that not established earlier? 
I won't spoil anything, but I regret following my hero. It's deceiving. That's what I'll call my hero. It is deceitfully paced in a way that it feels interesting. And it's like every episode ends with a cliffhanger and it's like, oh shit, what happens next? But after 80 episodes, every character is... It's like... My hero characters are like Overwatch heroes. They have one defining characteristic, and that's all they are. They are shallow. And I mean it. Thanks for the prime, Von Braun. My heroes like Naruto? I don't even agree with that because the Naruto without the filler is actually not that bad. I read the manga. I'm not gonna call it award-winning, but if you cut out a lot of the filler, Naruto has an interesting world. The idea of I mean, Boruto fucking ruined a lot of it, but the premise of Naruto was cool. The idea of jutsus, of having different elements, like there's lightning people, there's earth people. I mean, I, it did... I mean, no one else was really doing that, right? Avatar wasn't around. Jojo was doing its own thing for a long time, but... Naruto had its own... Technique spin. But I wouldn't watch it, right? And this isn't a compliment to Naruto. I'm just saying... Uh, it's sort of an insult to Naruto to compare it to my hero. Because whether or not... Naruto does anything good with its characters, it wants to do things with its characters. Even the peripheral characters like Gara, um, Rock Lee, a lot of these peripheral side characters, they get development. They have their own arcs. In My Hero, the peripheral characters are fucking flanderized. They are just there to sell merchandise and bounce off of each other with the same punchline. Uh, the girl with the ear, the, with the headphone ears. What did they do to develop her character since introduction? What has she done? What has, um... Uh, the blatantly sexualized 16-year-old girl with big titties. What what have they done to develop her character? The festival? Right. The girl who plays music played music. That Yeah, they really developed her. I mean, I guess she wrote a song. <laughs> I'm sure that really changed her as a person. I mean, Ochiko worked... Ah... Uh, at that one hero agency. She like did a temp thing, but that didn't change her at all. They're just like, she's a bit better at being a hero now. And that's it. They trained. How did they train? What did they do to train? They trained. They just, nothing is fucking ex um, developed. If your name isn't Deku or, it was what development has Bakugu gotten? And don't even don't even say the movie. The movie doesn't even count. That shit was hilariously bad. He knows the secret. Bakugo knows the secret now. They really developed his character. Within the first episode, doesn't Bakugo tell Med Tell Deku to go fucking kill himself. Literally within the first episode, the anti-hero's like, Hey, hey Deku! You should probably jump out the window and kill yourself! 
You quirkless idiot. And then within two episodes, they're like, no, no, he's reformed. He's got a good heart. He just, he just doesn't express it well. But he wants to be a hero because he looks up to All Might. And they never address the fact that, that he told Deku to, to jump out of a window. It's fucking hilarious. Every character in that show is just to compliment Deku. That's all. To give to give them the token friend characters with a bunch of different abilities. The only guy, the only character I like, I can't even remember his name, is the dude with with shell armor for for an ability. Redhead, the Red Riot. And they don't do that much with him, but he kind of had an arc. He got to... Like, he got locked in a room with someone that could have killed him. And he kind of proved it, his worth, in a way. His plot wasn't super derivative of anyone else in the game. And I think he's kind of got a cool dynamic. Bakugo's not a good character. But I like his interactions with Bakugo. Where he's sort of like the neutral friend that everyone gets along with. And he earns it. I like him. And you know what? I hope they do more with him, but they won't. Because I can't have anything nice. In conclusion, do not watch My Hero. <laughs> Take it from someone who has watched My Hero. Also, I'm just going to say it. The naming conventions of one for all and all for one. Terrible decision. Because when I got to a point I had to stop watching the show and start reading it. The brain does not immediately regis register which is which. And whenever they say all for one or one for all, I have to stop and think, wait, which one are they talking about? One, one for all, all for one. A-F-O. Which one is the good one? Which is the bad one? Every single time. And they talk about it constantly. So stepping in the purple hurts me. I don't totally know how I'm... There's probably like an upgrade that I haven't gotten. This game is Dread Templar. Quakey Dusky. I'm having fun. But I have gotten lost a few times. That little purple dude with the gray pair might be one of the worst anime characters I've ever seen. He was... You know, for a one-off singular gag, kind of funny. Like, oh, he's horny all the time, but no one likes him. That's kind of funny. And then they did it again. And then they did it again. And then they did it again. And now I, s I grunt. I actually, no, I just skip ahead every time he appears in the show or the manga. It's like, hmm, I wonder what the punchline's gonna be. That character is me when I make a joke on stream. Like, all right, I see where you're going for. All right, stop. Stop. You should have stopped earlier. All of the animes, all of that series comedy is just derived from 
This character has one personality trait. Watch them interact to a story event. Uh, I mean, is this where I'm supposed to go? Am I just taking so much damage I can't get through it? It's hard for me to tell if bomb rushing is a optional or optimal strategy here. I couldn't even pick up all the things. I really need to read Chainsaw Man. I keep hearing good things about that. I hear it's underrated. The art looks really cool. It's a dude with a chainsaw for a head. I need to read that. I'm still watching Paranoia Agent. It is as th weird and thrillery as ever. I'd recommend it. It's a fun binge anime. But I'm not gonna go in detail on it. That's just what I'm on right now. <sighs> I, I'm not... I don't... I have no idea what the game wants me to do. It seems to frequently put me in this position of... You can't go that way. Or you probably can't go that way. But there's nothing else to do. So, like, what do you want me to do? There is nothing else. I have a My Anime list. I don't know if it's updated. But, Funk Pills. If you want to see, like, what I've watched and rated... Yeah, I might have a link. I'd exclamation mark anime or something. I'm it, I might have it in chat. I have been here so fucking long. What do you want me to do, game? What do you want me to do? I even upgraded my dash and I still cannot move fast enough to survive. There's no way I'm supposed to be here yet. But why the fuck would they even let me come here if I if this isn't where I'm supposed to be? Like I'm guessing there's an item. That lets me walk on it. I mean there must be. There's no other explanation. And I can't find health anywhere. And my last save is at half health. Ten, not even half, a third. Red Templar is the game. 32 health. I need a bit more than that. Okay, 30 HP. Best I can do. I can't even remember what this blue bar is supposed to mean. I think what's great about JoJo is... Araki's writing style really incentivizes you to be a free thinker. Because he'll write cons- He'll write in character abilities and then never use them again, even during arcs where they would have been really useful. And it forces you as a viewer to go, What the fuck were you thinking, Araki? I could have written that better than you. Like, why didn't you do X, Y, Z? A 
Okay. You can't see it, but my head is hanging right now on my shoulders. I'm slim slumped over. What the fuck does this game want me to do? Genuinely. Am I going to have to look up a tutorial again for E2M2? I haven't even gotten another stage done. Can I, can I lower the difficulty? No. Because of course I can't. I think this is where I'm supposed to be. There's a yellow key. Yellow key, yellow door. Where is a yellow door? It leads backwards, so I'm guessing I gotta go backwards. Fuck. Yeah, I heard about the Quake remaster. Ah, uh, I'm not. There are no toilets in this game. What am I going to do with that information? Please. <laughs> I don't have the HP to make it there fighting. I don't have the speed to make it there without fighting. I mean, I guess it's my fault for saving the game on low health. That's my bad. I shouldn't have done that. I should have never taken damage in the first place. There's not really B-hop tech, so I can't style my way out of this situation either. Actually, hold on. There is a key section in here. I'm remembering. Please be it. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I, so the thing that throws me off isn't the fact that I can enter the purple area. It's the fact that they let me save the game before it. If I'm not supposed to go there, why would you put a save function there? That just makes me think that I'm going in the right direction. Either put the save here, or let me cross the purple area. No, that, that's the weirdest part. There's not a save in this room. I need to be, which is all that really matters now. Oh, shortcut. I inspired you to be a Machina sniper? How the hell did I do that? I don't even remember ever talking about the Machina. I mean, I'm proud of you, because you got to scope in, but a strange compliment. So what, what's the point of that purple area if I just load to a completely different map? Oh, what? Thanks for the second save. Oh, come on.
My maining sniper video. Holy shit. You're a real one, G. I don't even remember that video. I just kind of assumed anyone that's still here was not around during maining sniper. During any of the want so you want to main videos. I mean, you probably qualify for social security if you remember those videos. I wish those aged better. <laughs> but I accept my roots. I think there's a funny joke here or there in it. No problem, Brooks. I wonder how people would feel if I just randomly made like a wanna main heavy. Because I never did. I made how it feels to play heavy. Wait, no. Did I actually just say that? I'm a f idiot. No. Uh, what the fuck was my heavy video? What the fuck was it called? It wasn't. <laughs> I wish I made that video. Uh, no, I made. What the fuck video did I make? Is he what makes heavy fun? That's what it was, right? Yeah. What makes heavy fun? Oh shit, I did make wanna main heavy. I forgot! I forgot I even made that video. I made three heavy videos. Damn. Was this one good? It's it's 2015 funk. It was not good. Ah, another day, another chance to play as the heavy weapons guy, my, my favorite, favorite class. class. But look, no one else is playing him. That makes me think. Does no one like playing heavy? I'm gonna Google that. Yeah, I liked my own video. I, I don't think I have Chrome open. Okay, now. But I have you think the creator of hair gel doesn't use his own hair gel? Like you think he uses someone else's hair gel? No. He likes it. I like my own video. Look, up what I need. look at the tabs that I have open. Symptoms of cancer. Necopara cheat codes. Your memes end here. This last tab sucks. And 4chan. Okay. I mean... I think this... I'm curious what on the funk tier list this would be. I think it would be C. C or D. Stuff, but, uh... God, this gun-shaped sandwich sucks. I can't even eat it. Okay, B tier. B tier, but that's highest I'm going. Oh. I go on VG? In 2015, I did. Not anymore. Not since, um... 2015. I didn't even really do it in 2015. I think I stopped around 2014. But that was just like a visual the uh, callback. Shit. I still think giving sniper is high tier. Like, is it a little slower paced than it should have been? Yeah, but it's some straight to home video, earnest, humble content. And I stick by that. Not our spy. I regret peeking the mic within the first 20 seconds of that video because it is my most watched video of all time or most viewed at least and so my peep my most famous video i f i literally s scream into people's ears and i don't know if that's a good first impression death of an art style isn't my most viewed not by a long shot 
Not our spy is like six and a half million. Art style is like what, two? I don't know if I'll ever hit that number again. Six million on a, on one video. I think it's possible. I think if I pull out all the stops and really go viral. But even then. That is a tall order. And I'm okay with that. So I got to find the keys. I imagine I'll probably get another movement mechanic soon based on the layout of this room, which has a lot of uncrossable gaps at the moment. I think someone tweeted at me an actual tier list of my videos. I did not look at it. Felt a little self-indulgent to look at it, but... Thought I was funny. One key down. Do I think movement shooters will be oversaturated soon? I mean... Boomer... Retro shooters are already kind of oversaturated. The problem is just a lot of them aren't that good or unique. I don't think we're gonna have a lot of online team-based shooters. Movement ones anyways. We're still down to Paladins, Overwatch, and TF2. I can't really name a fourth. That... What's that one game that's coming out? Like Transformers or some shit? I, I don't remember. It's like a overseas property. They're making their own Overwatch-like. It was Gundam or something? I don't... It was weird. Some, like, robot things. Yeah, I guess Splitgate. Alrighty. Show me that purple key. I am uh, walking backwards. Didn't... Isn't Diabotical dead? Or... It's not dead. Um... Not <laughs> Isn't it, like, not out? Not playable or something? I've heard about it. I don't hear anyone talk about it, so I don't know if it's... Maintaining numbers or... If it will when it's out. Well, okay. The what? The same door as before, but I didn't, didn't have to break it last time. Anything to work with game. I'll take anything.
I mean, I'm walking in circles at this point. A blood-soaked skeleton. For the sub echo. The solution is to wander into the right room or to look up a tutorial because the game has zero resources for finding places you haven't gone besides stepping foot in it. I'm guessing this is it though. For a number of reasons. Oh no. Okay. Hoping I could like do a shortcut. No, I gotta go up there. did a full circle trying to get up there. I've spent so long trying to get the key, I've now forgotten how to actually get up there. Um. Oh boy. Oh, straight through the middle. Found it. cooldown. Thought I had it. What do you think of car seat headrest? I really hope Will Toledo is the final fighter on the DLC pass. On the Smash Fighter Pass. I love his work on Car Seat Headrest. I think he would make a good donor. He'll swing around a, a Car Seat Headrest. He'll dual wield them. And for his ultimate, two killer whales will consume the opponent. That or they get hit by a drunk driver. Maybe it's one or the other. It's randomized. I mean, I love Car Seat Headrest, but some of their songs feels like they go on for four minutes too long, you know? Like, what if I played the verse and chorus six more times? And then had a talking segment halfway through it. Well, Will, maybe you could just make the song three minutes long and call it a day. Maybe that.
Glad I opened up a big Jesus cross, or I guess Damien cross because it's upside down. But what's the point of that? Probably affected something in the middle of the map for all I know. Oh, that's a nice checkpoint. Thank you. Yeah, I was hoping I would pull out a shotgun there, not a rocket launcher. Can't even get a good look. Yeah, this seems like a point of interest. In the back spike of my heart. Our love tells me I'm a mess. Ever contemplated on Bingus Bongus? Well, think there's a save point near the entrance, but it's a little risky to try and hit it. Yoink. I don't totally know how to avoid the spikes. Oh. AoE, I see. Uh, unique boss design, I guess. Sentient heart with dozens of eyes. Can't say I've seen it before. I am damn near out of all my ammo, so this is going to be tricky. And 9 HP at that. I looked at this and thought it was a Mario pipe for a moment. It's like a purple Mario pipe. <laughs> oh shit, a crossover! Completed! Tabletop RPGs? Oh yeah, I fucking love D&D. I'm digging the shit out of it. Haven't played Call of Cthulhu. But I do D&D every Wednesday. Do, 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 do. I'm playing a level 11 druid. So very spell happy. I'm trying to play more of it. This reminds me of something. Calm Susser Todd, mainly. Oh, 
I wonder if there's a metal version of that song. I'm gonna look it up. Let's see if this is close. Eh, it said it was a rock cover. No. Eh, it's a little too f bluesy for me. I was looking more for like death metal drums. Yeah, I can work with that. I mean, the VOD's gonna get muted, but... Come on. It's got crosses everywhere. Can live without the trust in anything. Fuck. Through all the hurt and past. It's time for me to respect. The ones who love me more than anything Though with sadness in my heart I feel the best thing I should do Is end it all and skip the song What's done is done, it feels so bad What once was happy, now is sad I'll never love again. Sound requests? I mean, you can request the sound and I'll try to make it. But I, I'm not a vocal... I'm not a impressionist. You know, I do the song bit as a joke, but this developer knew exactly what they were doing. Not even question. You want a jump noise? I, what? What noise do you make when you jump? Boy ounce. Boy ounce. I know that's what I sound like when I jump. I don't even know where to go. I feel like I'm in that unfinished Dark Souls area. Uh, Dark Souls 1. This feels like a final level vibe. But I recognize there being another boss fight, and I don't know if it's in this area. I think this is where I go, though. Because I hit the red one already.
This game is fun, but it has some confusing progression segments. I'm still enjoying it, though. The first half caught me a bit more. They kind of stopped introducing new mechanics. And now it's just sort of a... Oh, I feel acid in my throat. Acid reflux. It's just sort of a by the books retro FPS. It's not bad. Oh, am I gonna have to hit the green one again? Oh, no. Yep, looks like it. You know, if this was dusk, I could just be hot my way to the other side. Like, I would already be there. Did Eva have satanic references in it? I can't remember. I just know they were really obsessed with Christian imagery. To my knowledge, Japan is not... I don't know what the the religion is, if they're a largely agnostic society. But I know Christian imagery, at least around the time Eva came out, was not very prominent. So that was... That was them being like weeaboo. Western boo for... For God. Like, the literal thought process for Evangelion was cr crosses look cool. Let's put them everywhere. Also, fucking hilarious that I cannot even leave this area now. I really love starting with no HP. Against two <laughs> giant laser demons. I mean, how the fuck did I get out here last time? Fourteen HP. Oh my lord. And I just loaded right before a death. Sure, I'll work with that. Fucker's just gonna respawn anyways. Am I a fan of Nichi Joe? Nick Ni Nich Joe? Nick Joe? Yeah. I mean that wasn't the question. You asked about slice of life anime, but the answer is that. That's more of a comedy. The two, those aren't mutually exclusive. Do you only watch Siri? Are, are you watching Korean soap operas? What other kind of slice of life anime is there besides the funny ones? So I'm in a boss fight now. Apparently. Really hope I had the ammo for this. Based on that health bar, I'm not totally sure. Fourteen HP. What the fuck? This is what you start me with. There's not even health packs nearby. What? I have a better idea. Didn't I save one of these? 
You're starting me with 14 HP. Fuck off. This is also 14. Could, could you give me anything? Just anything at all. Thank you. I got a cypher. Probably save those for the boss. Okay. Okay, okay. Get out of the way. Uh. Oh, this is a fun mechanic. Yeah, this is great. I, and the worst part is I can't move while saving. If I could dodge it, it might be at least worth trying. You can take damage mid-teleport, too. But you can't move. Well, holy shit. That just took half his health. Alright, bring it on, Nameless King. And his health's back. Yeah. Don't make the boss fight heal. Just give it a second health bar. It is way less demoralizing that way. A lot of skeletons. Um... You can get so fucked by the spawns of the NPCs, they just form a flesh wall that prevents you from crossing. Like, I just lost 20 HP because the game doesn't let me dodge while teleporting. Not a boss fight with a AoE arena attack. Red light, green light. Red light, green light, everyone. It's a boss fight. Let's everyone play Twister. I'm on green. He's not even damageable in that state either. Hey, I'm cool with this. Just maybe give me a, a chance to fight back. Three, four, five, six. Seven, eight. All right, eight shots. That's not bad. One, four. I. The whole thing is is damage. Yeah, I don't. It's not even a game of not taking damage. It's just as little as possible, I guess.
This doesn't feel like a boss fight. This feels like Simon says. Which most boss fights feel like on a deep philosophical level. Wait, this is a chore? I think this is the final boss. If I was gonna quit, I would have done it two hours ago. I just wish I could fucking save so I don't have to run this whole fucking distance just to fight him again. But the game is forcing me to kill every single enemy if I want to save. I, it's not worth it. It's just not worth it. All right. Check it out. Can't move. Can't move. HP draining. Just lost 20 HP again. They maybe make the player invincible while they're stuck in an immovable cutscene. Just a... Just a thought. I'm guessing the dev expected me to kill every enemy before taking the teleporter. But given this is a spawn point right before a boss fight, and I just want to beat the fucking boss, I'm not going to... I'm not going to cl clear a path every single time. It's just not worth the headache. The rest of the game's fun. It's just... a little sewed together at the edges, it seems like. I don't... Okay. So much walking. Gotta pick up all the items. Find the staircase. Run all the way back to the middle. All because the game cancels out saves when you get damaged. And so spawns you against an entire onslaught. Making it extremely difficult to save. What's the worst boss fight? I think I made a video on that. I mean, worst boss fight? Eggman and Sonic Heroes where you're just running on a track waiting to catch up to him. What's that Chrono Trigger boss where you're on a bridge and you're fighting like a giant mecha turtle or something? That was annoying. It wasn't hard. It just had a lot of health and I couldn't tell when it was... Actually, I guess it does show when it's getting low. I don't think that's the worst fight. That robot from Cuphead... One oh six. All right. Since he heals, it's just better to save these punches for after the transformation. No damage. Alright.
almost just seems like RNG sometimes. You don't always have anywhere you can go. I'm dead. Hey, you know, if you want to spawn a minion that I can siphon HP out of right now, that would be great. Just something as a player to not be stuck. One oh six HP or hundred. can't dash out of the orbs either, so you just have to take the damage. Pretty good run. Six HP, six HP. That's what you are uh, get for messing with the Doom guy. I mean, a uh, Quake guy. That's what you get for messing with BJ Blaskowitz. Finally, the only guy with cutscenes bites the dust. Well, he didn't say anything like, I'll be back. I guess I won't see him again. But he died without telling me what is my body. Damn. Where will this fucking portal lead me? You have come to the end of the EA build. Let's take a break. There is no longer a road waiting for you. Okay. I finished the early access demo. Thought that meant EA the company for a second. All right. That's cool. Um. Yeah, uh, to be clear, that's not the end of the game. That's just the end of the early access. Seems a little quick cut, like they just needed to finish somewhere. But I don't mind. I enjoyed playing it. I uh, got a little tedious at the end, a little sloppy, but all things considered, it was fun. Still in development. I'll probably play the full game. Nice. And that was Dread Templar. Truly a blessed game. So what now? As a streamer, truth be told, I don't totally know. <laughs> My only plan was to play that game tonight. I don't have anything else in mind. There's nothing else I really want to play. I didn't get to finish Blood Spear last stream. Potion Brewer. I wish the playtest is actually ended. So I can't actually play. Can't actually play Potion Craft now. It's inaccessible. That's not bad, Zledda. I'm trying to make a chance for people to 
Don't blow all your money though. You're already subbed. If you want to buy a plush, save, save the. I don't know how much it'll cost. The any money you'd spend on me, just hold on it. You don't have to like sub or anything. Terraria. Eh. How long have I been live? Two hours. Ah. Uh, I hate to cut it short, but that feels like a fair stopping point for me for the night. I'm probably going to break my fast soon. Because I haven't eaten in 22 hours. So I might just pop off and go make myself dinner. But this was fun. I just don't have any other games in mind to play. You know, I don't want to sit here and play Smite on stream. But... Let's see. So next stream is going to be Friday, probably around 4 p.m. I'm I have a couple of weekend plans, so the timing is going to be flexible. But midday Friday is the next stream. Am I fasting for a reason? A couple reasons. Health benefits. I need to drop a couple of pounds or I want to. And just to see if I can to challenge myself. Because I usually eat when I want to. I thought if I can go a day without eating, maybe that'll build some internal strength, you know? So, that's it. I am going to head off, but thanks to anyone that came by, lurked, subbed, hawked. Next stream's on Friday. I will let you know when the next, like, viewer games thing is. Still prepping the next video I can't give you any details on it but I have some cool stuff planned for the next two three weeks uh, that you will see as it comes out all right take care bye bye brush your teeth <laughs>